Welcome back. The Truth Commission has the task of investigating gross human rights violations in our past. Some of these violations happen to communities and are hard to investigate as individual human rights violations. Like the forced removal of black people who lived in areas where the National Party government did not want them to be. One such a place was Sophia Town in Johannesburg. The name Sophia Town has become much more than a symbol of the forced removal of black people by the apartheid government. It was a magic moment in the history of the people of South Africa. A moment holding the promise of what South Africa could have been. and we used to sit here. My mother was very strict. I couldn't cross the road. I, would, I just had to sit there at the stoop and watch. Sometimes I used to feel scared because, you know, when they danced, they just went on their, you know, jumped on their tummies like this with nothing on their, you know, bodies and that. Safari Town was truly a melting pot, a place where musicians, artists, writers and gangsters combined to create an excitement that is still remembered with nostalgia. People lived as if they were free in a time that white capital and Afrikaner nationalism gathered forces to formalize a most restrictive ideology. Sufayatan was the embryo of an exciting South Africa, culturally and politically. And that was exactly why it had to be destroyed, because it threatened the designs of racial separation and white Calvinist superiority. It was the first black urban experience, you know, which expressed itself. There was a huge new surge of an urban folk who were establishing, I think, a kind of an urban folklore. Your writers of the time, your journalists, your uh, shakers and movers of the place. Sufayatan so happened almost by accident. The owner of the farm, Waterfall, one H. Dobianski, planned a private leasehold township for low-income white people. He named the development after his wife, Sophia, but he failed to attract white buyers to the area. It became a place where black people could buy land, and they did alongside Chinese, coloreds and Indians. As white South Africans rallied to bring the National Party to power in 1948, Black South Africans were creating the first truly non-racial society in the country. Sophia Town was a representative of freedom to live with whoever was your neighbor. It was too much of a threat. In February 1955, trucks rolled into Sophia Town, loaded its inhabitants and moved them to a place called Meadowlands. The shocking images of Sophia Town, people just being uprooted and carted away, uh, much against their, their will, and, and quite ho hopelessly, you know, struggling against this thing. The machine of the National Party government at the time was just simply too strong. Boom, boom, boom. Sophia Town was raised to the ground, as if to erase the memory of what could have been. And in its place came triumph, triumph, victory. The sterile suburban streets that emerged in its place were indeed seen as a triumph for white rule. The spirit of Sophia Town was broken, its people dispersed. But in the life of a nation, 40 years is not that long. And last year, triumph became Sophia Town again as South Africans started regaining their dignity. One cannot help but wonder, what would our society have looked like today if the magic of Sufaitan had not been destroyed? It was a fluent kind of living, vibrant community. And uh, I think longing for the kind of freedom that hopefully we're getting into now, that's what made it such a magical place. And I think it'll always always uh, hold a place in, in the imaginations of the people who lived through it and maybe those who didn't. As we can say, it's an original.